What is going on, YouTube people? Northeast Ohio Cards and Comics here for another Marvel Monday where we talk about comic books and Marvel cards and all things in between. Basically, anything non sports related goes on the Monday show. Today, we're going to talk about comic books uh, and the comic book market, kind of as, as a whole, slash in general. Um, it's very interesting playing both sides, like being definitely more deeply invested on the sports card side of things, like for sure. But also dipping my toe in on the comic book side, how similar and different the two sides of the coin are and how the same patterns that we see on the sports card side of things kind of follow over to the comic book world. You know, recently... On the sports card side, we had all the grading shenanigans, companies getting bought, new companies coming in, massive backlog, shutdowns, and lo and behold, on the comic book side, you're seeing the same thing. Uh, you know, Blackstone comes in, buys out CGC, they have a massive backlog, getting longer by the day, uh, even CBCS is starting to get backed up to a degree. And those are really the only two major players in town there. Uh, both markets saw massive run-ups at different points. The sports card market in January, February, March, and the comic book market more so in the early spring, you know, March, uh, April, May, June, uh, into that window where a lot of stuff saw massive run-ups in prices. And both markets pulled back. Sports card market pulled back. The comic book market, a lot of the stuff that got a lot of rise to it back in the spring has also come back. Now, the interesting thing on the comic book side, which was part of the reason why I liked delving in on this side is because I always believe that the floors were a lot higher. And we are seeing that play out here. Yes, things got astronomically expensive there for a couple months. Yes, prices have pulled back since then. But the difference is they seem to be leveling off at a a floor that was much higher than the previous prices that they were before the massive run up earlier this year. And they do appear to be leveling out there. We're seeing, you know, multiple weeks in a row now of sales flatten on a lot of these key books. And I have a lot of them pulled up here that we're going to run through, especially in the eighties and nineties stuff that saw the big rise uh, back at the beginning of the year. Golden and Silver Age stuff was always well-respected, and it saw massive run-ups as well, don't get me wrong. And some of that stuff has pulled back as well. Um, as we all know from the sports card side of things, nothing goes up forever. Eventually, it's going to slow down and pull back. The question is, is how big is the pullback? And on the comic book side of things, from the peaks, the pullback was much smaller compared to what we saw on the sports card side of things, where they went up and went down and then kept going down and then went down some more, then went down a little more, and are just now starting to level off, but their level off, off point is much lower than what they were six months ago, eight months ago, even a year ago. You know, most cards are below the comps that they were at last summer, depending on the card. But as I've talked about a million times on the channel, the big difference with the comic books are the census counts are much lower compared to sports cards, even on the high census count books. And the floors are so much higher because you don't have you have the cyclical nature of movie and TV releases, but you don't have injuries. You don't have off the field nonsense. Certain books are always going to retain value. And it's also, you know, if it's ASM 300, which I have up on the screen now, that's the only first appearance of Venom that there is. There's not other options. Whereas if you want a Luca rookie card, there's a thousand different Luca options to go choose from. We're going to go ahead and dive in and look at some price trends of a bunch of keys from the 80s and 90s era. Dipping back a little bit further, we'll take a quick peek at like a giant size X-Men and Hulk 181. A lot of the same key books that I look at because I think they're good market barometers for a little bit of, you know, the more modern-ish stuff. And when I say modern-ish, I'm talking like 80s and newer. Uh, the silver and golden age stuff is so expensive, even in mid-grades, that... For me personally, it's just not an area that I dive into very often. I'd like to, but I'm just not there yet. So uh, like, comment, subscribe, all the YouTube stuff down below. And we'll be using GPA analysis because it's 
not a huge fan of it, but it's probably the best that we have on the comic book side in regards to charts and graphs. So uh, let's go ahead and dive in. We're going to start off with ASM 300. And this is definitely pretty much flattened out right at 6K. Uh, at time of recording on Sunday evening, there is one up for auction to the ends tonight. It has not ended yet, but it was sitting at around $5,200, give or take, uh, with some time remaining on that item. Yeah, it's a 5,200 with about six hours left on it. So I'm not sure what that one will end up. But my guess is going to be right around 6K because that seems to be where this book settled in at. And you can see this one actually saw two levels up, went spiked way up end of last year, leveled off, and then hit a raid, hit, got all the rage when uh, everything went crazy back in March, April, and now has leveled back off again and seems to have settled in right at 6K. Uh, on GPA, the light purple lines are your outliers, essentially, and the dark purple line is the average. So I generally like to look at the dark purple line because it's kind of averaging everything together. Uh, but you can see how it had its big run up, its pullback, and now has basically flattened. Maybe it sees another dip down, but I don't think it does. This book is not super low census, not super high census. It's kind of right in the middle in a 9.8. Uh, and Venom is one of the most popular characters in Marvel. So once again, saw this huge run up, pull back, and now looks to be starting to level off again. Next, and these are some of the books that have taken a biggest hit that I've noticed uh, are, I'm going to call them non-key keys. They're not first appearances, but they're classic covers. Uh, like this is the first Venom cover, first real Venom cover in ASM 316, classic McFarlane cover, first full cover appearance, just an awesome looking cover. This saw a massive run-up and has really pulled back. Uh, so back in December, basically the first of the year, this was a $600 comic book. It shot all the way up to $1,600 in three months. And now it has pulled back and kind of settled in at around eleven dollars to $1,200. Uh, even maybe a couple, there's even a few sales here around $1,000. Uh, but it looks like you could probably get it for around $1,200 fairly easily if you look around for it. Lots of August sales in that twelve to fourteen hundred dollar range, but once again, same thing. How from those of us that play in the sports card market, how familiar does this graph look with this massive run up and a massive drop off, and now it actually looks like it's starting to pick back up again. Part of that is probably because we're starting to get Venom movie hype again. Uh, it got hyped because everything was getting hyped in the spring. This had Venom movie hype on top of it. Trailer dropped. A lot of them hit the market. People got bored with it. Prices fell back. Venom's starting to get a little hype again. Prices are starting to go back up again. So a lot of these issues that we're talking about, to me, are good buying opportunities to potentially hop back in if you missed windows earlier in the year. That's what I'm looking for right now. There's a couple key X-Men books that I did not pick up back in January and February when I went on a massive buying spree. That I'm now looking, that I'm watching the prices on and looking to get back into uh, before X Men stuff really starts going crazy once we start seeing trailers and casting and rumors and all that stuff, which could be quite a ways away. But I'm not buying, keep in mind, I am not buying this stuff to flip short term. I am buying this stuff to hold long term. Because uh, to me, as a long term hold, 98% of comic books are safer than most sports cards, other than you know, your absolute goats. ASM 361, first appearance of Carnage. Uh, same thing. Saw a pretty big run up back in April or March slash April. Got all the way up to around a $1,200 average with some high sales around $1,600. Uh, it's now currently down a little under 1000 You could find these for $900 on the regular right now. This is, so this one's a little, when it comes to census stuff, this one is definitely considered high pop or high census. Uh, and there's a lot of them coming on to the population report. Reggie Collects, uh, whom I'm a big fan of, does a very fun video every week of the most submitted books to CGC. And this one has been, I know it was on last week's, and I think it's been on other weeks. So there's, in addition to a lot already existing, it does sound like maybe there's a decent amount of these coming. Though I do think something like this will always have a certain level of demand attached to it. Um, but... As we see on the sports card side, when things do get a little higher census, it 
they can go down fast and it takes longer to go back up again. It takes a lot of demand to be able to shift the market on stuff like that. But long term, I do think uh, this is still a good long term buy if you're not looking to sell anytime quick. Uh, you know, Carnage is going to be around for a while. Uh, maybe if the you know if the movie would flop, I don't think it will. Maybe that would have a negative impact on it. But I think it's just only a matter of time before we see Venom and Carnage fight Tom Holland in a movie. Um, it's going to happen. And when it does, this stuff's going to all go crazy, in my opinion. So, But I like this as a relatively long-term hold as well. Carnage is always going to be one of the most popular spider villains uh, that's out there. Ultimate Fallout 4, first appearance of Miles. This was another one that had massive run-up. Um, back in the fall and Christmas of last year, this was a $1,200 book. Uh, come March, 3K book. Uh, come August, $2,500 book. You look at the recent sales here. Whoops, thought I had them pulled up. Uh, 25, 26, 25, 24, 25, 27, 26, 24. Uh, this one, in my opinion, if if you missed the window, I would look to get back in on this. I do think Miles is eventually going to come over, potentially as soon as the next Spider-Man movie. We may get a cameo. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, Miles will be in live action at some point in time. It's, it's just a question of when, not if. And when it does, this book will go crazy. For a lot of people, this is their Spider-Man. Um, I snagged one of these in a second print just because of the price. Uh, it was a lot cheaper, a little slightly different cover. A lot of actually prefer that cover because you can see Miles' face. Uh, it is lower census, but I don't know how that much that matters because it is frowned upon because it is a second print a little bit. But I wanted a piece of the action, and it was an easy way for me to get in. So I went with a second print. I didn't check second print prices to see what they're doing. But Ultimate Fallout 4, same thing. Got its massive run up, pull back, and then you can see it has basically leveled off. But... The second we get anything Miles News related, that graph is going to spike right back up again. Uh, right in the same vein, Gwen Stacy, a.k.a. Spider-Gwen, Edge of the Spider-Verse 2. Um, there is a new Spider-Verse movie coming out. She's going to be featured prominently in it. I also would not be surprised if we eventually see Spider-Gwen in a live-action form uh, on the Sony side. And lo and behold, we see the exact same movement. Back around Christmas time, it was around a $1,000 book. It shot all the way up to 1800 and has come all the way back down to 1300. Still slightly trending down, um, but I like it for anywhere around or slightly above $1,000 if you could find it for that range. Here's some 1200s, but it's starting to creep down. Maybe you could find one off eBay for like around 11. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I think I got mine for right around a K or right around 1100, and I still feel pretty good about that. I bought it somewhere in here ish. Uh, in January, February, right before it really peaked. Um, but big fan of Spider-Gwen. Spider, Spider -Gwen. It's only a matter of time before she shows up in live action. Uh, and same thing. Once this shows up in live action, this will go crazy. This will even probably go nuts just with some uh, Edge of the Spider-Verse or Into the Spider-Verse 2 trailers or hype or anything like that. We're already seeing it now with uh, Jessica Drew Spider-Woman stuff getting a lot of price run up because of her being in or rumored to be in uh the new into the spider-verse movie the first movie was very well received extremely popular and really really good uh and i have a feeling the second movie is going to go the same way uh, another one very much in the vein of uh asm 316 where it's not really a key it's like a fake key this one even more so because Wolverine's been on plenty of covers, but this Wolverine Hulk cover, classic McFarlane art once again. Notice the trend. Classic McFarlane covers hold value extremely well. Um, I've always really wanted one of these. One day maybe I will, and the price has really come down on this one. Uh, this really shot up. Uh, you can see this got all the way up over 2K back in, once again, April. Uh, April was pretty much the peak for a lot of this stuff. All the way back in December slash January, this was about a thousand dollar book. Got all the way up to almost two thousand, and then is back down to around fourteen hundred. And in fact, it might not be on here yet. Yeah, I was gonna say one just sold a day or two ago uh, for under fourteen hundred. Actually, here's a thirteen seventy five, a thirteen twenty five. Oh, here's a one thousand twenty five. I missed that one. I don't know where that sold at, but I wish I would have saw that. Um, 
once again, not really, these ones get tricky because it's not necessarily a true key. There's no first appearance involved here. It's just an extremely wanted cover for display piece by a classic artist with two iconic characters uh, and a throwback to Hulk 181 with, with, with them two going against each other. I absolutely adore this cover. I would love to own one one day. Uh, if I found one for around a K, I would probably buy one for my personal collection. Um, but I worry this book isn't going to see big spikes and swings based off spec, in my opinion. It could see some, you know, Wolverine and Hulk, if they would fight in a movie or show up on screen together, this would probably get a bunch of run up. But Wolverine just coming to the X-Men, I don't know how much of a bump this would get. Maybe it would because all Wolverine stuff would go up. But iconic cover, uh, iconic artist. Decent census population. It's a little high, but it's not like crazy high. I want to give one. I'm, I don't get as scared off by comic pops as a lot of people do. Um, the only one on this list that really concerns me is ASM 361. And I would still buy that book at the right price. So. Uh, good old giant size X-Men number one. Oh, probably one of my most wanted comic books out there i talk about this one all the time uh one day i shall own one i have my eyes peeled because their prices have come way down uh i pulled up an 80 here because this is there's been a decent amount of sales on an 80 uh, but once again we see the exact same thing december 31st this was about a 3100 book march 31st it's an eight thousand dollar book and then currently uh the last couple average sales were around 5500 so Definitely still up there, but has come down quite a bit. And to me, the giant size X-Men specifically at the right price is about as safe as it gets. There's a lot of them. There are a lot of them um, across all grades. Obviously, in higher grades is a whole different story. If you can afford a higher grade and you can lock in a higher grade of this book, especially with the downswing in prices, um, I absolutely would. This is the ultimate long-term hold. When the X-Men come and they are coming, this is going to be a key that just goes nuts. I mean, I'm not breaking any news there. This is, you know, pretty obvious stuff. But second appearance of Wolverine, uh, first appearance Storm, first appearance Colossus, first appearance Nightcrawler, first appearance Thunderbird, uh, new team, classic cover, just has everything going for it. This book will always be in demand. Always be in demand. This is like... Um, I guess it would kind of equate to like a LeBron tops Chrome almost because it's a more modern book. Um, everyone always wants one. It, you know, if, if one pops up somewhere, there's always going to be people interested in it. Uh, and once again, if I got something like this, it would strictly be as a display piece. Uh, it, I would not be looking to buy it to flip it anytime soon. I would hold this long term, but, uh, but even this stuff, not immune to the price decreases. You can see that's a pretty big pullback. Uh, in just a very short period of time with it still trending downward. That's the interesting thing. Curious to see where this bottoms out at. Um, I would love to know uh, that 5250 is a very appealing in an 80. If I would have saw that, I would have been very tempted. That's a little out of the price range I'd like to spend, but for an 80 for 5250, I'd be curious to see how that actually looked. I wonder if it had some color fade or something. 129. I've been chasing this one forever. Um, this is first appearance of Kitty Pride, first appearance of Emma Frost, and first appearance of Sebastian Shaw uh, with a Hellfire Club cameo appearance, I believe. Uh, three major key X-Men characters, two villains, one hero. Triple key, great cover, great story, part of the Dark Phoenix saga. I've been chasing this one for a hot minute. I've been trying to find a 9-6. I keep getting sniped on eBay auctions and... Uh, People that have them on Facebook do not want to sell at the current market price. And current market price is about eleven to $1,200. Uh, same thing. This got a run up all the way up to $1,800 for the average back in April slash May. But it's currently down to about $1,200. Um, there are tons of recent sales, uh, five to be specific, from uh, $1,050 to $1,275. However, those are all eBay auctions. Nobody on Facebook, and I've talked to multiple people in multiple groups, they are all holding to the 90-day average at 1600 Sorry, I'm not about that life. I don't really care what the 90-day average is. Maybe this is me coming from the sports card side. Could you imagine me trying to go sell a Zion at the 90-day average versus what's been going on in the last week? 
people would lose their minds if you tried to do that on the sports card world. Um, on the comic book world, people really like to hold that 90 day average. And I personally just don't get it, uh, especially when I get it if it's one rogue sale. But when you have five sales like this in a row, it's pretty clear what the current market price is for the book. So if you want to sell it at market price, I'm your guy. If you don't, I'm definitely not going to pay 90 day average on it. Uh, it's been a little frustrating trying to track one of those down. Uh, Secret Wars 8. Uh, Secret Wars has been getting a ton of hype lately. Uh, it's going to continue to do so because it's been a lot of rumors about um, Secret Wars being the next major Marvel story arc. And Secret Wars 8, specifically the first appearance of the symbiote suit. Uh, this is another one. It spiked way up to 850. This is not a super low pop book, but if you're looking for a nice entry level, fun cover, good story, has some juice to it. Uh, Secret Wars 8 is not a bad way to go. It's one of the first ones I picked up. I think I got mine for around 600 uh, ish, give or take. They shot up to 800. They are currently back down to around seven. Um, but I think this book has a lot of potential with everything that we just mentioned. There's probably going to be a Secret Wars series. I still wouldn't be surprised if Tom Holland ends up in the black suit at some point in time. And then I think this gains a lot of relevance. And I didn't pull it today. Uh, but ASM 252 would be another one. It's weird the ordering on these. 252 is actually the first appearance. This is the origin story. I think I misspoke earlier because this came out after 252 did because of the way the storylines were running uh, in comic books at the time. Kind of a weird quirk there where timeline-wise, this is the first appearance. But 252 came out first uh, by a few months, actually. So that's its actual first appearance. Another classic book. I love that book as well. Um, le decently low census count on that one. I have one of those as well. Hulk 181, same thing. Not immune to all this. Saw its big run up. Got all the way up. This is in a 9.0. I pulled a 9.0 because there's a decent amount of sales on a 9.0 in 2021. Got all the way up to 14K and has come all the way back down to 10K. So a 4K drop in... Three months, four months. So it just goes to show even this high end stuff uh, and super low pop, even in decent mid to high grades in a 9 0, is not immune to these drop offs like this. And this would be another one. Um, if you can afford a 181, I'd be watching these prices closely. This is still trending down. But to get into a Hulk 181 at a decent price, there's going to be a new Wolverine, guys and girls. It's going to happen. I know. Spoilers. Uh, last one, the channel classic New Mutants 98. I feel like I'm obligated to talk about this book because it's the one I caught the most flack for when I first dove in the comic books. Um, I think this is a screaming deal at its current prices. This shot all the way up to $2,500 uh, for an average back in February. Uh, it was sitting at around 1000 nearly almost tripled in value, and now has kind of pulled back and re-leveled off around two. Uh, there and even under two. If you could find this for under two, like in that eighteen hundred dollar to nineteen hundred dollar range, I'd be all about it. The second we get a Deadpool trailer, this thing's gonna go nuts, uh, and it's just a matter of time. There was just a report the other day uh, that Ryan Reynolds and them were working on the story for the next movie, um, so that's eventually gonna be coming. This is probably one of my favorite ones on the list because Deadpool is extremely popular, uh, and you're not buying it at peak prices. But you can say that about it pretty much everything that we talked about on here. None of these books are at current peak prices. Now, the key question is, is how much room do they have to still go down? That's what we don't know. Uh, but I am actively looking. I've spent a lot on sports cards the last few months. Um, I am actively looking to start shifting money back over into buying comic books. Comic book prices got astronomical the last few months. I stopped buying them. They're starting to come back down again. I'm looking to get back in for the stuff that I missed the first time around. Uh, that's kind of the beauty of also playing in both sides. When one market's doing something stupid, you can kind of go look at the other one and seeing what's going on with that. It does get tricky to allocate funds sometimes because there's things that you want on both sides of the fence, but is what it is. I view the comic books more as PC items. So a lot of the profits that I make on sports cards, I move over into the comic book side of things and buy comic books more for PC slash long-term holds so it's a little bit of a little bit of both because i definitely pc some x-men stuff for sure but uh that's all i have for you guys and girls today 
Like, comment, subscribe. Catch you guys and girls on the next one. Peace.